Hello everyone and welcome to a really wonderful game that was played in the 2008 uh, Chess Olympiad in Dresden and it's a game between Finnish Grandmaster uh, Tommy Nybach and uh, of course uh, uh, world champion Magnus Carlsen. He was not a world champion in those days but he was still incredibly strong and even uh, here he's I think some 17 years old he was uh, rated almost 2800 so uh, qu quite a monster already and this game was sent to me by a subscriber Mikael Sivilnoinen uh, and he also uh said uh, a lot of things about the game he also uh shared a video with me regarding this game which is also in the description below F first thing you will see if you want to check that out this game it's a very short part of the vid uh, part of the game uh but uh, you can check it out if you want it features a uh, moment in this game that we are going to cover uh but uh, that being said uh let's check out this game as it's just uh, just wonderful and uh, uh, Finland was losing uh, the match to Norway and uh, Nybak needed a victory here against Magnus and also uh, on the other board they also needed a win so let's see let's see what happened here so Nybak with the white pieces opened with knight to f3 he went for the Reti opening and Magnus replied with knight to f6 with c4 uh, e6 knight to c3 and now d5 striking in the center uh, we have d4, so transposing from the English to the Queen's Gambit declined, uh, and now bishop to e7. Black is ready to castle, we have bishop to f4 by Nybach, uh, and now Magnus castles. We have e3, now preparing to develop the light square bishop, and knight b to d7. So this is all very standard stuff, the the harvest, uh, harvest defense of the Queen's Gambit declined, uh, and here c5 by white. This uh, seemingly anti-positional move is basically the strongest move in the position, uh, because nowadays... Uh, uh, the word anti-positional in chess uh, means that uh, the, the engines say it's the best move so we can no longer say such things as uh, anti-positional uh, if the engines say it's okay it, it's uh, it's okay and here it, it is still considered the best move so c5 and black will now try to undermine this pawn with moves like b6 and if defended would be for then a5 which is something that is seen very often when white grabs more space like this on the queen side with c5 so c6 first and now bishop to d3 white can continues development is ready to castle and now b6 we start we start undermining the pawn as white is no longer fighting for the for the center here and we want to well we want to just capture here and then after captures win the pawn so white defends this we have b4 and the magnus further tries to undermine the pawn structure with a5 and here we have a3 again just defending the pawn structure and now bishop to a6 and uh, interestingly uh, some uh some uh when was that in 2014 in the uh rematch uh, in the world chess championship uh, uh, match between carlson and anand where carlson was defending the title uh this position also occurred and in that uh, position uh anand captured the bishop on a6 and won the game against magnus but here uh we have just uh, castles uh, in this position uh, but the position has been reached many times aside from this game also like i said was played in the game uh, anand versus carlson in 2014 it was played in Mamidyaro versus Aronian. Aronian also had this position against Adams. Uh, Grishu had it against Nakamura. Kramnik had it against Van Hao. So it, it's a position that occurred quite a lot uh, in top tier games and uh, in those lower uh, rated um, uh, as well. So here like I said we have castles and now queen to c8. Uh, we have queen to c2, uh, white continues development, connects the rooks now, also puts pressure on that h7 pawn. Uh, so here black captures, we have bishop captures, queen captures, and now Magnus played this knight to h5 move. Uh, and it is only as of this position uh, from move 13 that this position has never been reached again. So let's see how, uh, how Nybach deals with this. He goes bishop to e5, which makes sense. Uh, because it also comes with a trick. Uh, so what do you play here? Uh, if you go for this knight captures and knight captures, then this knight is just a monster, and there's no really, there's really no good way to get rid of it. And it kind of seems like you can play f6, but by playing f6, you actually uh, block your own knight from coming back into the game. So here, white can just grab a pawn, knight captures, and after queen captures, g4, win the knight. You won a pawn. And okay, you weaken your king's position a little bit, but it's not like you're you're under attack or anything. This is perfectly fine for white. So bishop to e5, uh, somewhat a tricky move. So Magnus just continues developing. He plays queen to b7, and now rook f to c1, as the uh, c file might open up. So you want to have the rook ready here to uh, put some pressure along the c file. Black does the same. Rook f to c8, and now h3, also freeing the h2 square for the for the bishop uh, if. Uh, 
uh, if it will be needed. So here Magnus finally eliminates this bishop, we have knight captures on e5, knight captures on e5, and now Magnus closed the closes the position with b5, and now he probably wants to capture on b4, maybe trade off uh, the rooks here along the a-file, trade the, the other rook as well, and so on. So here we have rook c to b1, uh, and here Magnus played queen to c7. Uh, here you could also go for captures and captures, uh, and then for example rook captures on a1, rook captures on a1, uh, but the problem is after rook to a8 you would get rook captures on a8, queen captures on a8, and now this knight captures on b5. That's the problem if uh, you just continue with this seemingly good plan. The problem is this uh, uh, piece sacrifice captures and captures, and then white gets two connected pass pawns for a knight, which is uh, a sacrifice that often occurs when white goes for this c5 um, uh, structure which is incredibly difficult to defend off for black as you see so after rook c to b1 magnus goes queen to c7 instead but now the position is actually uh, well if not winning it's incredibly close to winning but it should be winning so feel free to pause the video here and try to find the absolute best move for white while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's A4. Put additional pressure on this B5 pawn and now you will see that black has very little replies. So of course this is the threat, there's a uh, triple attack on this pawn here. And if you go for something like B captures on A4, then you get Rook captures on A4. If A captures, then Rook A captures and it seems like you've traded off everything but white's position is incredible here. He has Rooks doubled on the B file, he can go a Rook to a Rook to B7, he can go Rook to B6, put pressure on this pawn and this is just uh, an over overwhelming position for white and uh, the, the, of course you cannot trade off the rooks along the b file because here white just trades captures 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 and captures and you are losing the c6 pawn this comes with an, with an attack on the bishop and the queen so here it's just captures captures and now this uh, well passed c pawn is just going to win the game easily so instead after a4 magnus tried the other uh, the other capture he played a uh, he played a captures on b4 uh, but now comes a captures on b5 and here we have a beautiful beautiful peace sacrifice and you don't really have a good reply here uh you you kind of have to capture the knight or otherwise it's not gonna um yeah you, you haven't really gained anything you, uh, if you just wait white will play b6 and get a uh, get a beautiful pass pawn and if you go for something like captures here and try to completely ignore this then you can either just uh, first trade on a8 or you can go knight captures on b5 doesn't really matter after b after queen to b7 you're going to play rook captures on a8 and after rook captures you're going to play rook captures on b4 and it's pretty much the same you get another uh, amazing uh, pass pawn here and it's uh, well it, it's uh, if not winning it's incredibly close to winning but in a practical game uh, black uh, black definitely w will not be able to hold this so instead, after A captures on B5, Magnus accepted the challenge, he played B captures on C3, he grabbed the piece uh, with the idea of giving back the piece very quickly with bishop captures on C5. So here we have knight captures on C6, B6 is also an idea just uh, uh, creating a pass pawn, but why not first eliminate the C6 pawn and now you have two connected pass pawns, which is... Uh, you know, two connected pass pawns are ready to go on the sixth rank, uh, definitely worth uh, worth a piece. So knight back to f6, uh, Magnus tries to activate uh, this knight, and now queen captures on c3. We have bishop back to f8, uh, so uh, white never has this uh, uh, capture to come with check, then you can start pushing those pass pawns. And here we just have rook captures on a8, rook captures and rook to a1. Now trying to trade off uh, all of the... Uh, remaining rooks if captures and captures then it's just too easy to play this with white you're just going to bring the queen up the board and start pushing that pass pawn to victory so instead magnus goes for something else he plays knight to e4 he puts pressure on the queen and now the queen still has to remain defending uh the rook on a1 so queen to b2 uh the keeping an eye on that rook on a1 and now magnus uh moves the rook away from the a file he simply cannot uh, afford a trade here he goes back rook to e8 uh, and now comes knight to e5. And now the knight has uh, moved away from the from the past pawn. Now you can start pushing those pawns. And here knight captures on c5. This was 
uh, this was Magnus's plan when he played the, the, this setup with the, with the knight here. He wants to give back uh, a piece and grab two pawns while he's at it. But now, uh, once again, uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not grabbing the knight right away. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, yes, it is b6. And this is uh, this is incredibly important because now uh, the queen uh, has to go somewhere. And where do you where do you put the queen in the game? Uh, queen to b7 was played, but there really aren't any better squares uh, because now. Uh, what white plays is not d captures on c5, but rather queen to b5, because the rook on e8 is undefended. That was the whole point. And now when the rook moves, you are, you are going to capture on c5, and then you will again have two connected pass pawns, and the queen will be guarding this pawn, so the bishop cannot recapture. So that's, that's the stuff. So here, rook to a8, now threatening to capture the rook on a1, uh, but Nybuck just trades here with captures, captures, and now d captures on c5. Uh, so, sorry, uh, captures, captures, and uh, now uh, D captures on C5. Uh, we have queen to a1 with check, king to h2, and now Magnus wins back uh, this knight. So queen captures on e5 with check. So Magnus is now up a piece, but those two connected pass pawns are just, just incredible. And sorry, we are already on move 31, but I just wanted to mention uh, at that moment... Um, uh, at that moment where b6 was played, uh, this is the moment uh, that you can check. There's a two-minute footage in the description below. First thing uh, you will see, so you can check out this moment uh, as uh, it was uh, very interesting to see how Carlsen reacted to this. And you can see uh, through his body language that he did not... Uh, he wasn't really happy when he saw this b6 move on the board. But getting back to our game, uh, after this queen to a1 check move, king to h2, like we said, queen uh, grabs the knight with check, and now g3. And now Magnus needs to play something, but it's unclear what. Those pawns are just going to march forward, and you're going to have multiple queens to, to deal with. So here, one idea is h5, h4, maybe try to bust open the position here. Magnus tries it a different way. He plays d4 and wants to uh, bust open the position here. But just b7 white doesn't react to this and he says this is just winning so queen to f5 trying to get some sort of a perpetual here with queen captures on f2 uh, but um, uh, nybuck just goes back queen to b2 defends the pawn we have captures on e3 by magnus f captures on e3 and now queen captures on c5 there was nothing better now nybuck brings a second queen into the game and now the game can easily be resigned magnus played queen captures on e3 uh, and now just queen to c7. Consolidating, we have h6 by Magnus, uh, getting rid of some back rank uh, weaknesses. And now uh, we have queen b to c2. We have queen to d4. And now we have queen 7 to c4, offering a queen trade. And it was in this position on move 39 that Magnus Carlsen uh, resigned the game. And Tommy Nybuck uh, played this remarkable, remarkable game where he defeated uh, an, an almost uh, 2,800 uh, rated Magnus Carlsen. And it was a, it was a pretty good deal uh, for Finland as uh, the uh, final score between uh, Finland and Norway uh, in this 2008 Dresden Olympiad uh, ended 2-2. Uh, so it, it was a draw. So really, really, uh, really awesome stuff. And... Um, uh, as uh, my subscriber suggested when he emailed me, uh, Tommy Nybuck, as he he is a Finnish Grandmaster and he's an incredibly strong Grandmaster, uh, but it uh, doesn't appear that he's uh, playing chess any longer. He he has a positive score against Magnus Carlsen, but uh, I, I don't think he has any games played after 2019. Uh, I think he shifted to poker, and I, I wasn't uh, really able to find any more info, but it seems that uh, he completely shifted his attention towards poker. Uh, I apologize if I'm wrong, but it, it does appear to be so. Uh, but yeah, this uh, remarkable game remains, and I'm uh, very happy that uh, you, you've sent it to me. So uh, there you have it. Uh, always uh, important to use that hashtag suggestion, uh, because even if I don't see it now, I will always go to my channel, then I'll write a, a hashtag suggestion in the search bar. Also, I'm using hashtag suggestion on my emails, on uh, wherever I can. So keep using it, and we will... Uh, always be able to find nice games uh, li like this one. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, uh, Mikhail also chose the title of this uh, video, Carlson's Finished Nightmare. So I hope you enjoyed that as well. 
Uh, I would like to thank John Austin, Eric Berman, uh, Edmund Freeman, Niels Gorder, and Narendra Adala for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.